Well, spring has finally decided to make an appearance here in Pennsylvania. I'm about tired of the winter. So what I'm working on today is taking down this cat fence. When we moved into this house, we didn't want to put our cats inside anymore because they kind of tore the joint up and we had six cats at the time. So what we did, and people said that you can't fence cats in, so I think half of it was we just wanted to prove them wrong, but we also didn't want our house destroyed. So what we did is we built this solid fence. The color looks horrible. We didn't want it to be this color. I don't know why I turned this color. But we built this solid fence. And then on the inside, we put this welded wire, the two by four welded wire. We weren't gonna use the basement bathroom for a bathroom. So what we did is we took the window out and we just put in a cat door with a little ramp. Then we put the little cover on that had a lock on it so we could lock the cats in at night. And for the first little while, we were a little bit paranoid. So we would lock him in almost every night, just kind of let him out during the day. Then after we got to trust him a little bit, we just kind of let him out all the time and they were fine. And we also put all of the litter boxes for the cats down in that bathroom and that worked out really well, just storing all the cat litter down there. And in the inside of that doggy door, there's a platform and then there's a ramp that'll take him down to the main floor. And then inside the basement, which is kind of a wreck right now, there's a doggy door inside the door to the bathroom so they can go down into the basement. You can kind of see how they tore up the curtains there. Out of six cats, we had zero escapes, but we did have a stray cat that ended up being our seventh cat who would hop up on this netting and kind of use it as a hammock, but he never did jump in with our cats. So what we have is this inch bird netting that went over the top. So that welded wire goes from that side of the house all the way around on the inside of the fence. And then it loops around. We don't have any breaks in that wire up until this gate. The gate is just your typical type gate that you can get from Lowe's. And we just put the welded wire in it instead of chain link and mounted it to our fence and over at this edge we just kind of had the wire kind of wrap around the house a little bit but we had zero escapes our house stayed intact which was nice and uh my wife is pretty much a collector of cats or was a collector of cats and i would get really super attached to them and then they'd pass away so after um, we still have two cats left but after we've had so many cats pass away I told her that's the end of it because I'm pretty soft hearted towards animals and uh, I just don't want to take it anymore. So we have some outside animals that we feed, some outside cats that we feed, but I don't want any more cats. Maybe if Emily wants one one day, it can be an inside cat and it'll just be one. But I told her I was like, no more cats. So what we want to do is remove that little fence there. The dog door's over there so we can let the dogs out. They can come out. They come down these little doggy stairs that we built them a couple years ago. And then they can have this whole area. And we built this dog area, uh, I think it was about three years ago, after we built the, after we built the doggy door. So I want to start by getting this net off and I want to Keep it in pretty good condition because I want to use it for an upcoming project. And it's going to be a little bit of a pain to get the net off because we kind of have it in behind this wire that we stapled in with some pretty big staples. And then I have the Ryobi stapler that shoots some smaller staples and we went and just totally went to town and stapled up the wire and this netting. So it's going to be a pretty big project getting this off from here. I'm sure my wife will do a good job at time lapsing it.
So we thought spring was here a few days ago, and of course this is Western Pennsylvania, so it's cold again. So I'm just gonna fight the chilliness here and try to get this wire taken off the cat fence and get this post out of here and take out this fence. And my wife also wanted me to tell you that when we first had this thing built, it looked really, really nice. We take a lot of pride in our work and we try to do a good job. So the way it looks now, you know, it looked kind of ratty and um, some of the posts and stuff have been pulled in. And that was caused by the net hanging down and the snow would build up on it in the winter time and really weigh it down. And so we ended up putting this middle piece in here and that kind of helped support it. So if you decide to do something like this in the future and you live in a cold climate, make sure that you build something in the middle to make sure the net doesn't pull all the way down and help support your posts. When I put these hinges on the gate, you'll notice that I put this holder upside down and that one right side up, I don't know if you can see it. So then nobody can just come by and like lift up the gate. And then when I put this bracket on, I went and tackled the outside so nobody could just unscrew it either. Maybe it's a little bit overkill, but nobody broke in and let our cats out. So to get these posts out, I'm just gonna wrap a chain around the post and around that little pulse holder, I don't know what you call it, the little gate holder there. And then I'll just rip it out of the ground with that high lift jack. So I was able to rip that post out, one, because I have heat man strength, but also because we only put these in the ground, I don't know, 20, 24 inches. And that's because that's about as far as we could go down before we hit rock. So part of the reason we wanted to show us demoing this cat fence is because we also wanted to show you how we built it. On the bottom, we hooked the wire to the two x four and then bent it around on the ground and covered it with gravel. So there's no way really anything can get in unless they took some time and dug underneath it to get through the gravel or the cats definitely aren't gonna get through that. I wanna keep these four x four posts because I can reuse those there's a ton of staples along here. Maybe you can't really see them that well. But I put a ton of them in there to hold the wire on. And I'm going to need to replace that post right there. The second one in. So I want to keep these. And I don't have the energy to sit here and cut through each one of these. So I'm going to use this grinder with this cutoff wheel. And you should wear a full face mask for it whenever you use these. Because these can shatter. And they will totally impale your face. Uh, I just looked for the last 20 minutes. Couldn't find one. I'm getting kind of impatient, so I'm just going to grab the safety glasses and be careful. And I don't know, maybe I should invest in another full face shield. I should mention the reason I'm cutting all this apart and not taking all the fasteners out is because I don't want my dogs to run around here and getting something in their foot. So if I pull a staple or something and ends up in the grass, I don't want them to step on it.
gate's just a little bit too big for this opening that I have. And I made this gate, and I swear when I measured everything out, it was gonna fit right in there. And I did leave a little bit of extra space for this, but somehow I miscalculated. So my miscalculation actually kind of worked out because I'm going to move this, move this post over a little bit, and then that'll allow this gate to come over. But I'm gonna switch the hinges to that side the top one is actually going to be turned down and then eventually I'll put little tack welds on here. So I don't think there's really anything specific for these gate holders. So I'm just gonna come over to the middle of the post, about a foot down. And same thing from the bottom, I'm just gonna come about a foot up. I don't want it so high that it has the potential to split out the post, but I also don't want it so close together that the gate can kinda twist back and forth. These are basically just like big screws, so I have a pretty big drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the shank of the holder. So it'll be mainly the threads that just hold the, hold this holder in and just get threaded into the wood. So my gate's just a little bit on level. So I'm just gonna turn this top holder one more turn. See if I can get it to prop the gate up a little bit more. So now I have to adjust these little brackets on the gate until this gate is level with the top of the post. So what I really like about Harbor Freight tools is that every single hand tool in the store doubles as a hammer. So we built this portion of the fence just a few years ago for the dogs and I like the way we did this and it was purposely different from the way we did the cat fence. This has the post, the wire on the outside, and then this covers, these cross members cover the wire. Over here, like I'd mentioned, we just had solid wire going through the middle to kind of deter the cats from trying to climb up and it worked. Now what we want to do is rip this wire off the inside and mount it to the outside and then get some different cross members, put them on the outside so it'll match that fence. What I want to get accomplished tonight is ripping all this wire off and take out this end post and that post right there because it's pretty crooked and take off these cross members and then I'm just going to move this post over until I'm happy with the spacing of the gate and then I'm going to put another post in there and then I'll throw some cross members on and throw up some wire tonight so my wife can let the dogs out a little bit later and hopefully I can come back tomorrow and finish it up. Now I'm going to take a string and attach it to the outside of that post. It'll touch the outside of this post, and it'll touch the outside of that post, and I'll get a pretty straight fence along here. So whenever you're putting these posts in, you need to be careful because there's multiple things you need to consider. One, you need to make sure the hole's big enough that you'll be able to adjust around this string. And you'll need to get it set such that you can take your level and it's not so let's just call it left to right as you're looking at the post left to right it isn't a huge deal but going back and forth you know relative to how you're standing to the post is absolutely critical because you need to make sure that you can basically touch the string but then also get the post level 
So as I sit here and move this back and forth, right there is pretty level. I need to adjust it back just a little bit. So right now, I'm basically touching the string and it's level. I know you can't see it, I don't have a camera person. And then also what you wanna make sure of is that this post is parallel to the string. You don't want it like cockeyed. So you wanna also use the string as a guide to make sure that the post is, is parallel to the string. So you have a nice straight fence. Let me fix this after that demonstration. Okay, so now I know that the base is set in there. It's gonna be pretty level. I'm only gonna throw, I mean, you can cement these in. I don't because, you know, after 10, 15 years, these things rot off anyway. I'd rather be able just to pull them out of the ground and start over and not have to worry about a bunch of hunks of cement in the ground. And so we use this gravel and it's kind of mixed in with the mud. And we'll just throw a bunch of gravel in here tamp it down all the way around the post check for level and make sure you don't hit too hard at the very base because you'll start knocking that post off you know back and forth left and right and then you won't end up being level and being able to touch the string So this is the staple gun I was talking to you about that I used to staple up this wire. It's galvanized, they use galvanized staples. And these are two inch, uh, no, these are like inch and a half staples. And this thing has no problem sinking them. And it's cool because it has a little light for, you know, when you're out in the dark trying to put a fence together because you're running out of daylight. So I'm just gonna take the welded wire, start on that end post and then work my way across these two posts, get them stapled on the way I want, and then I'm just gonna leave the rest of the wire uh, wired up to the gate there, and then that'll get me through tonight, and then I can come back and put it together later. Okay, so if you're ever out doing fence and you know you're not gonna finish, just go ahead and take the roll and wire it to something. Here I just have a wire to the gate and so the gate doesn't move, I just have the post hole digger wedged in there. I have my post put in. I'm gonna get my wire laid out. Usually what you'd do is you'd lay the wire out along the fence, get it as flat as you can and then set it up Get it where you want it and staple it into place. Yeah, I've got a couple of helpers here. So once I get it laid out, which I'm actually just going to lay it out right over here in the yard, since I saw a lot of my debris in the way, I'm just going to lay it out flat. Then I'll drag it over, lay it along the fence, staple it up the way I want it, and I'll just trim it to length. I guess I should have mentioned the other night, I was just putting a fence up temporarily so I could let my dogs out. And whenever you buy this wire, try to keep it in really good condition, make sure it's not smashed or there's any dents or anything because it'll unroll really well and it'll lay pretty well. But I kind of have a little bit of nonsense working against me here because we use this for a garden fence. We just post it. Uh, hammer some of those T posts in the ground and hook this up so this wire is a little bit bent but you can fix this stuff pretty easily you know you can just kind of bend stuff back and forth if you need to and into little waves this stuff's really hard to pull tight like a chain link fence you know it's a little bit harder than that there's different brackets and stuff I guess you can buy that'll pull these tight I'm not going to worry about that I don't think our house is ever going to be on better homes and gardens so 
I'm just gonna pull this as tight as I can, get it stapled up to the height that I want, and then I'll go ahead and start putting the cross members on. I actually get to work on the fence in the daytime so this is nice if you're wondering about the getup uh, this is usually what I wear in the summertime because I don't like sunscreen and I also don't like getting sunburned so I just throw on these clothes I'm the only person in my neighborhood that isn't part of the no shirt club when they when they mow their grass if you look at all of us usually my neighbors have sandals and I don't know shorts or something on and this is what I looks like I'm trying to hide from the world but this is what I wear I recommend this more than putting the sunscreen on, but you know, if you don't want to look like goofball, just wear the sunscreen. I was stretching this wire, and one thing that I forgot about is putting some sort of brace in here. This is just gonna be temporary. We did the same thing over at the end of this fence, and the wires stood up pretty well. We don't really stretch it, stretch it, so it doesn't really pull on the corners as much as like a barbed wire fence or a chain link fence. So just us putting the cross members across kind of holds everything in place pretty well so that's what I'm going to do here I'm going to start putting the cross members on and I want I purposely put the gate right here at the top of the fence I'm going to do the same thing here cross members are going to start and since we're on a little bit of a hill this first cross member is going to go straight across to the other post and then I'm going to just going to gently slope it down I guess I should also introduce my new toy as my wife calls them. All my tools are toys, they're not tools. So some of you tough guys out there might be thinking what Cracker Jack box did I get this out of? But this is actually a really good saw when you don't wanna drag an extension cord around. I only have a few cuts to make and this little battery operated saw is really good for cutting like your casing and stuff inside houses. And it's great to take this little saw. I've used it a couple times now at jobs um, just where the floor has been finished and I have to be the one to install the trim and the quarter round at the bottom the baseboard and the quarter round and I'll just um, just zip through that stuff really fast it's not real heavy and like I said don't have to fire an extension cord so I just go up there zip all the cuts real fast use my cordless nailer to shoot everything in and walk away So if you saw the videos where I was framing up the shop, I always was harping on the, keeping the crown up whenever I wanted to span lumber up on end. Same thing with a fence. If you're ever gonna use this stuff, whether you're gonna put up a picket fence or anything, make sure that crown's going up. The bow and the wood is going up. For those of you that didn't see it, all wood kind of has a, a natural bow up. It bows one way or the other. So make sure that when you're looking at the lumber on end that the bow goes up so so the crown is up the crown they call it the bow is up so I'm gonna put that on the fence this way so as this wants to settle down it'll kind of become more straight versus if I had it this way it's already starting to sag a little bit and then especially if you put pickets or something on it it's really gonna sag down So usually when I want to hold boards up and I don't have anybody else to help me, what I'll do is, like you saw earlier, put a board up kind of underneath here just to hold it up temporarily. 
what I'm gonna do here is come down about three and a half inches since two by fours are about three and a half inches it doesn't have to be perfect either probably come down closer to four just put a pretty big screw at a slight angle down and I'll do that in both places and then I can work up here and get this right then I can adjust the wood just a little bit and get it sitting on exactly where I want it. So that's just kind of a tip if you don't have somebody to help you. So the last thing I have to do is put the latches on. So I'm gonna have one of these coming out from the gate, bolted onto the gate. I'm gonna have one of these that are screwed into the post we've used these for a long time they just come together and we put a lock on them and that's what we had in the cat fence before and what i'm going to do is measure down from the top of the gate down to the holders just get both of them about the same height as these gate holders here So having the locks on here might be a big inconvenience for some people, but we don't go in and out of this gate too often. And we don't want anybody, you know, just coming by and open it up and we don't know that it's open. So we like the locks and this system's pretty inexpensive. So I don't know, this is what we go with. It worked for eight years with the other fence. So we're gonna stick with what we know. So our house looks a little wrecked as well. If we put an addition on the other side and we're kind of working our way around with the siding and we ran out of time before it got cold so this year we're gonna work on getting that roof done and get all the siding put on we did replace all the windows all the windows in the house are new except for one big window out front in the living room so this pretty much wraps up this project and i know you're thinking one thing what am i gonna have for dinner but you're also thinking what about that big gap underneath that bottom rail? And if you look over here, we need to get more gravel there, but we piled gravel on the inside and the outside, so dogs are less likely to try to dig at it. And since I wanted the fence to kind of continue on, I didn't wanna bring that rail super low. And since we're basically on a hill, of course this side's gonna get piled up with gravel. And this stuff that we get, this, I'm going to tell you wrong. I think it's the um, 2, 2B. It packs pretty well. And so it's either 2A or 2B. But it packs really well. And so we'll be able just to kind of pack it up on both sides. It'll work really well. We've done this pretty much all around our house and our fence and everything. Because it keeps the weeds down. I just go by one time every year spray some extended weed killer on it we don't have any weeds and then of course trying to get through this stuff after a while is like trying you know trying to get through concrete so this worked out pretty well and pretty happy with the way it turned out we'll see what the boss says so one day we are going to redo this bathroom and so we'll end up taking the lock off and taking out this window and putting in a decent window but for now it's just going to be locked up So we appreciate y'all watching our videos. We really enjoy um, putting these videos out here and at least showing at least some of the stuff that we know, trying to teach people. And we appreciate the questions that we get as well. People asking, you know, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? And, um, you know, we like to trade information back and forth. So if there's ever anything that you do that might work as well, you know, something that we can improve on, please let us know. But we appreciate watching and we certainly appreciate those of you that have subscribed. Thanks, hope to see you next time.